In this video, I'll be introducing smooth structures on manifolds. Okay, so our first definition is going to be of a CK function. Okay, so we say that a function, F, that brings you from U a subset of Rn, so this is an open subset of Rn, into an open subset of Rm, is called CK if the partial derivative in respect to the ith component k times. So the kth order partial derivative in respect to the ith component of the jth coordinate function is continuous. Okay, if you don't necessarily understand what I mean here is that the partial derivative in respect to the ith coordinate kth, so the kth um, order of it, and here that we have it that f of x is going to be equal to just these coordinate functions. Okay, so these coordinate functions fj are just decomposing the output of f into its uh, components. So in short, this just means that f is k times differentiably continuous. And we say that if this is true for k bigger than or equal to zero, so for any of those k's, then f is smooth, okay? And it's sometimes written c infinity. So basically, a smooth function is going to be a function such that it can be differentiated however many times you want. You can differentiate it over and over and over and over again, and it'll still be continuous. Also, if f is bijective, if f is bijective and f inverse is smooth, okay, so not only is f smooth, but its inverse is smooth, then it is called a diffeomorphism. But how can we extend this to manifolds, right? So if I have my function, like f, that brings you from a manifold m down to r, how on earth could I guarantee that this is going to be ck? How can I extend this notion for a function from m down to r? Well, the way you could do this is maybe by looking at like a uh, phi that brings you from u a subset of m into u hat a subset of rn, right? And so basically what the diagram looks like is that I'm going from m via f to r and then a subset u via phi down to u hat a subset of rn. And maybe a good way to look at this is this function right here. Okay, this arrow that brings you from a open subset of Rn to R. And this is going to be phi inverse and then F. So F composed phi inverse. Because first to go from here back to M, we have to take phi inverse. And then to go from here to R, we have to take F. But there's a problem with this definition. How do I know this is independent of the, ch of the chart I choose, of the coordinate map I choose? Well, that's where we have to add in the extra structure. What extra structure would I need on M so that this would be independent of the chart I choose? Well, what we need is for that F composed psi inverse to imply F composed phi inverse for any two of these charts, psi and phi, well, how could I transition from F composed psi inverse into F composed phi inverse? Well, the way to do this is to do F composed. Well, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and do phi inverse composed phi and then composed psi inverse, right? This right here is the identity map. Those cancel each other out, and I just get this. Well then, because of the associativity of this composition, I get F composed phi inverse composed phi composed psi inverse. 
Okay, so basically what I have to check is that phi composed psi inverse is ck, or that phi composed psi inverse is smooth. Well, another way to look at this, that's probably a little less complicated than doing this transition, is to just look at a diagram, right? So I have some u a subset of this, and a v a subset of this, u goes down via phi, down into u hat a subset of rn, and v goes down via psi um, to v hat a subset of rn. And so, looking at a map that goes from here to here, okay, going from rn to rm, and I just check that this is going to be ck, or smooth. So to go from here to here, I have to do phi inverse, and then psi. So psi composed phi inverse. But there's a small problem with this, is that u and v, they're probably not the same set. So what we end up having to do is instead look at u intersect v. This is now the do in the domain of both psi and phi. So I can go via phi to u hat, and I can go via psi to v hat. And to go between them, I have to do phi composed psi inverse. And that'll give me it. Now this is what's called a chart transition map. Because here I had a transition from this to this. And what I had to do was use this. So this is a transition between charts. Okay, so now how do I work this into being CK? Well, definition two. It's going to be of a CK atlas. So say M with an atlas A. A here is a collection of charts. It's just a set of a bunch of charts like these, whose domains cover the manifold. So it's very important that the domains of the charts cover the manifold. So say M with an atlas A, has any two charts u phi and v psi in the atlas a have phi composed psi inverse b c k so phi composed psi inverse here the chart transition map is going to be k times differentially continuous We've just moved it into a map from Rn to Rm. Then the atlas A is called Ck. Basically meaning that given a collection of charts on a manifold that defines a manifold structure on it, and I know that the chart transition maps, these important maps, that transition you from the manifold down to the reals is going to be CK because now we can use this definition if all of its maps, all of its charts, have this chart transition map be CK. Now there's a specific name for chart maps that are CK. So if I have this chart transition map as CK, we say phi and psi are CK compatible. So they're called CK compatible if their chart transition maps are CK. So hopefully I've explained it well. So basically what I did here was I tried to extend the definition of CK to a function between a manifold and the real numbers. And so I just looked at its chart representation. But I wanted to make sure that that, that definition is chart independent so I needed to have it that the chart transition maps are all CK as well. So let's go ahead and formalize this with another definition. So we say that a map F from a manifold down to the real numbers for M with an atlas A, a CK manifold, so that means that A here, a collection of charts, is CK by this definition. F is called CK if 
if for any chart, um, u, phi, an element of a, f composed phi inverse is ck. And then, by how I discussed it before, this is chart independent. But there's a problem. There's a very slight problem. It's not that huge. It's just that some functions can be CK under two different atlases. So say I had the atlas on the real numbers for real numbers under the map X squared. Okay, that's an atlas, and that's actually a smooth atlas, because it's trivial. But I could also have the atlas of the real numbers under the identity map. And these would identify all of the same maps, f. Because x squared is a smooth map on R, and so f composed x squared, or x squared inverse, is still going to be ck. And the identity, obviously, that would identify the same thing. So these are two different atlases that have the exact same smooth maps. So how do I just identify an atlas that has just an entire smooth structure for maps that's unique? Well, this is definition four. It's going to be of a CK structure. Okay, and the definition here of a CK structure is that given a CK atlas A on M, a manifold M, the smooth structure determined by A is the atlas of all maps phi from an open subset of M down to an open subset of Rn such that they are CK compatible with all charts in A. So basically what we do is we just take our atlas A and we extend it so that it's the maximal. It has every single map in it that it could have in it while still being CK. So the CK structure determined by an atlas, is just the maximal atlas, that CK, containing A. What I've discussed here is that the smooth structure on a manifold is just a maximal atlas that is smooth. So for example, these two determine the same structure. Okay, they determine the exact same CK structure. Okay, so what about our manifolds with boundaries? Because then it's not so simple, right? Okay, so say we had f from u a subset of hn into rn, okay? We say that this is smooth, or this is ck, if for every x an element of u, there exists u tilde, an open set of Rn, such that x is in u tilde, and there is f tilde from u tilde into Rm, such that f tilde equals f on u intersect u tilde, and f tilde is CK. So basically what we do is we say that we just take that function f out of the half plane, move it into the real numbers for every x, and we say that if it aligns and that if that function is CK, then we're good. And then you can then extend this in a very similar way to manifolds with boundaries having CK structure and CK maps just using this definition of CK on the half plane. So just a really quick recap of what we just went over. What we did was we, we said that atlases are going to be collection of, of charts whose domains cover the manifold. And we see that that atlas is called CK if, the char if for every chart 
Their chart transition map is CK. And then what we do is we take that and we create a maximal structure from it. We take every single map that's CK compatible with every single chart in that atlas. That creates a new atlas, which is maximal, and it creates a brand new structure that uniquely determines smooth functions on that manifold. That was the entire point of that. And then what we did was we extend this definition to manifolds with boundaries. And that's it.